So what's up guys, let's continue with this flow versus concentration concept. So we've done our molar balances on the reactors using flow rates. What's a flow rate is essentially how many moles passes through that unit time. But in reactor engineering, especially at the lab scale, or when you're doing experiments, uh, chemical experiments or so, we're going to use a lot of the term of concentration. And what is concentration exactly is essentially how many moles do you have per volume. And the first thing you're going to note is that we, in one we're using time and in the other we're using volumes. So how can we relate then, how can we relate flow of J and concentration of J? <clears throat> well, it's kind of easy. The relationship is essentially the volume. So volume per unit time, if you're talking about flow rates, for example, F of J, and only volume if you're talking about moles of A. <clears throat> so this is typical for a batch reactor, and this is typical for a continuous reactor. For example, CSTR, PFR, PBR, we're going to use this, okay? Now, uh, this concept is known as volumetric flow, which is essentially how many volume do you have per unit time. So if you open your shower, and you take, I don't know, one liter, and it takes one minute to full completely, then your volumetric flow rate will be one liter per minute. <clears throat> Hopefully you get that, because we're going to apply these equations, so this for batch, and this one for continuous flow rates, in the molar balances design equations. So let, let us not waste that much time in that. Let's go and apply it for the batch reactor. The design equation of the batch reactor is this one. So if you haven't, if you don't know how I get this equation, please go back in the videos, go to the batch reactor, and I derive this equation here. Now let's substitute the formula of how much, <clears throat> or how do we define the moles in terms of concentration and volume. So you get this equation. We plug in this data here and since volume is constant we can take it away and volume goes with volume and we get this beautiful first order differential equation which is the differential of concentration of J with respect of time equals the rate of reaction of J. <clears throat> nice one, that was batch reactor. But what happens with the continuous flow reactors? Let's see this continuous tier tank reactor. We have the design equation. We also have this in our past courses. So check the videos. And yes, we're going to substitute this guy and this guy with these values. So initial value of volumetric flow times initial concentration and the final volumetric flow times the final concentration. Since the volumetric flow is kept constant, we can take out this and we are left with this initial minus final and we can take this one over here and we get this equation in concentration terms. We do the same for the PFR. This is a little bit complex because we got this derivative. So once again, remember F of A equals concentration of A times volumetric flow. So let's apply this in this parentheses. Everything else is stays the same. And since the volumetric flow rate is a constant, it doesn't change with time or volume, we take it out and we pass it dividing. And we get this differential equation in terms of concentration, which is cool, because if we got any concentration data, we can use this. If we got any flow rate data, we can use this. And final but not least, oh, no, we're still in the plug flow reactor. Actually, we are developing the Integral, so what I've seen is I send the differential volume here and the rate of reaction here. I take out the derivative or the integral. I integrate this and I got this beautiful integral. Check out that once again I force the minus RA, which means rate of reaction. I got it here positive. I put a negative, so I need to switch these guys. And I get the volume derived by the volumetric flow rate. Now, PBR is exactly the same, but we're going to be using these concepts. So, yeah, 
I forgot this symbol here, but it's exactly the same as previously. We are going to substitute this here and the volumetric flow rate is constant so we can take it out. <coughs> then we integrate, we force once again the minus RA here and we get W divided by volumetric flow rate. Yes! And those were the equations. Please note that I'm going to um, give you a beautiful summary of all the important equations. Of course you don't need to learn them and you don't need to uh, derive them every time you're doing a problem. You're going to have probably a formulary and you're going to know when to apply it, not that much how to derive it. But you, know, you need to know when it is possible to apply that equation and when it is not possible. So that's everything for this video guys. Next video we're going to see this beautiful example of continuous reactors, how to apply some formulas that we have seen before. See you in the next video. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.